Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, sitting down to talk a little bit about Starfield. You know, after the showcase week, I thought things would slow down a little bit. You know, Todd Howard is retreating to Bethesda Game Studios. Phil's going back to Xbox. Matt Booty's going back to Xbox. Like everyone's retreating after what was a very busy showcase week. But we already have brand new information thanks to IGN, where they had some hands on time with Starfield just around an hour. And with that, are some brand new details and i'm just excited to get any scrap of information on this game quite frankly because look y'all i was talking to my friends about it last night when i was playing a little bit of a game i'm reviewing right now and i was saying i just i just want starfield now man i'm just this weight is agonizing but any little morsel of information will satiate this beast known as the starfield hype machine and with that ladies and gentlemen Let's not delay any further. Let's get into this new information on Starfield. If you're new here and you're into Starfield news and information, sometimes speculation, consider subscribing. And with that, let's get it kickstarted by setting up the framework. You know, how was this play experience done? Is it your traditional preview? The answer to that from my experience versus what Ryan had to go through here, no, this is not like what I've done before where I sat down for two to three hours. I played a game with hands-on time and got to do whatever I want, however I want. This seemed to be a very curated session, which Ryan described went across multiple save files throughout the early to opening parts of Starfield. But what's interesting is he played all of it on Xbox Series X. I think that's very important to note because when you look at Starfield, I think it's delivering everything where a lot of the conversation has been around the game itself and very little of it is around the 30 FPS debate that has been much more quiet compared to something like Redfall. And that's because of the ambition that Starfield is showing. People are willing to stomach it. But what we all want at the end of the day, and which seems to be a curse here in 2023 with a lot of great games, is something that works and runs properly. So to hear that they got some hands-on time with the Series X version, even if it was just an hour, does to me convey some level of confidence. At the same time, I do have to pull in some of my own personal experience here, which is, and this was a prior, you know, confidence lost in Bethesda Game Studios era. When I previewed Fallout 76, we had it about a month early to try out an event, and it was lagging up a storm, y'all. Frame drops everywhere, but they said it was like network stuff, and they're going to figure it out, and we know how 76 launched. So, to me, that's some trust that's really difficult to earn back when you're lied to like that. So just keep that in mind, but it is encouraging to know they're playing on the Series X and that he didn't report any type of technical issues at all. So let's continue on to some of the more meat of the conversation here. He said that the scale and scope of the game is true and suspects that people could play it for actual years. Now, while he said that, he didn't experience a story mission from start to finish. Again, he hopped around a lot of different save files, and I think it's good because he brings in a lot of different angles and bits of experience there. He says that the thousand planets are mostly procedurally generated in the terms of terrain, but the things that are on top of it are handcrafted because he asked Todd this during his session and wanted to convey it to the rest of us, which I thought was important clarification. I had actually reached out to Bethesda. I have yet to hear back from them because I was confused about the procedural generation. I've seen people saying I got it wrong. I've had some people saying I got it right in my understanding of it. And I never feel like we've got a clear understanding of it. And maybe that's just me being dumb. I'm not going to act like that's out of the realm of the possibility here. But when they explained it in the Starfield Direct and they showed an area with the same location twice and so my understanding was all right so they make all of this content all of the quests and stuff but maybe when you show up on this ice rated planet you'll find an abandoned lab i'll find a tower or something like that uh, but maybe they'll both hold the same story i that's where some of the confusion lies but what ryan said here kind of ironed it out a little bit more for me where i understand where the handcrafted content lies and where the procedural generated stuff lies as well but to say that you could play this game for years he gets a little bit into why that is the case because he said that there was a point where he visited new atlantis he said that he met with constellation but he won't say why other than you'll understand within the first 30 minutes of the game and this is important because we can already tell through the trailers that you're going to meet new atlantis there and they're going to help you with probably these artifacts. So I feel like the trailers already explained that much out for us. But then he describes New Atlantis as Mass Effects meets Oblivion's Imperial City. That is one hell of a sales pitch to me. 
that is exciting because Mass Effect Citadel is one of my favorite locations in video games. It's hyper futuristic hub where everyone unites to discuss the future of humanity pretty much. And then all these other alien races coming together. But then also Oblivion's Imperial City is, is such a key note here because I think it's one of Bethesda's best cities in the terms of scale and realization in multiple districts and speaking of which he does say that new atlantis has multiple districts and the way that he got around them was by taking what he called a subway and he said that all the npcs here you can talk to now some of them you'll click a and you'll interact with them and they'll say a little blurb but a lot of them you could actually converse with which is great to hear. To me, one of the under-discussed components of RPGs that I think makes them work in the Bethesda game studio space is you can have a conversation with anybody in the older BGS games. Now, some will have more ROI than others. Some you'll talk to and you'll actually get a quest out of it, some unique information. Some will say, hey, how can I help you? And they're a trader or something along those lines. Not every single conversation is gonna be extremely deep, but the fact that it was there was nice. Now, when Starfield increased in scale, a lot of us were worried, okay, is that mean we're gonna start to lose some of those hallmarks from the BGS style games? So to hear, it's kind of like Imperial City, that there's traversal to multiple districts through a subway system, and on top of that, that there's a highly interactive nature with these NPCs has me personally really excited because New Atlantis is one of the first places I want to get to when I get my hands on Starfield, whatever that may be. I want to gun it straight to New Atlantis and just see how dense this city space is. The way Bethesda described it is it's their biggest city in the terms of content and scale. And so I love the idea that New Atlantis could be its own game into itself. So when you're hearing that from the developers and then you're also hearing McCaffrey describe it as, yeah, you could spend thousands of hours here, years here, insane to think about just based on what we saw in the direct and that he said he only scratched the surface of the surface. For a couple of things that we've checked off the list here as still mysteries with Starfield, Ryan said he did not see any non-human NPCs as in aliens, creatures that we interact with and also he didn't see any type of mounts i imagine the latter probably will be a thing in some way shape or form just because some of these planets are huge and there's so many different places you can go and explore so i'm very curious to see if they tackle that at all i don't mind the on foot exploration it's actually one of my favorite parts of a Bethesda Game Studios game is the very on foot nature of it. Also, no non-human NPCs here. This is still something that I think is out to be a possibility in the game. You know, the whole point of the story is what's out there, right? And I do feel like it would be a great moment to introduce alien life if at the end of the story, that's what's out there, right? That is how I personally look at it. But at the same time, I kind of like the idea of it being an all human world. Like humanity is just out here. We see pockets of that, like in that one derelict spaceship that you can land in, according to the to Starfield Direct, where they say, we thought we were the only humans out here. Like maybe a part of the Constellation program that launched early is like a test flight. And now they're out here on their own and they thought they were just lost this whole time, but they're actually not. That type of stuff is really exciting because it's all grounded in reality. And that's what they were going for artistically, right? They mentioned NASA punk and whatnot. So I don't know if we should really ever expect aliens. My hopes solely lie at the end, end, end game of it all. I'm not holding my breath either way, but no mounts regardless of all of that. And so let's move on to the next detail. He was asked about a pacifist mode and said, there's a moment early on where you can pick up a weapon at the start of the game, but you have a choice not to. And he said he's unsure about a pacifist mode, but did mention that the melee combat was satisfying. I thought that this was really interesting to hear because number one, I would never have defined Bethesda's melee combat as satisfying. It looks more satisfying based off what we saw, but that would be a substantial improvement and a good sign for Elder Scrolls 6, right? If they got the melee combat finally down, it's not as, I'd say, floaty and clippy as it was in previous Elder Scrolls games. But also that the pacifist mode is something I hope Bethesda Game Studios looks into. Would I ever touch it? Absolutely not. But there's so much of this game that evokes No Man's Sky, which is what Ryan defines it as in the end of this whole segment. He says it's like No Man's Sky with your Bethesda Game Studios RPG fixed on top of it. 
And since there's so much of that resource collecting and outpost building and ship building, there's so many things you can do that are not combat oriented that I feel like Starfield could just be this fun survival game without a story. And I wonder if Bethesda Game Studios is going to go in and make some type of pacifist mode. I wouldn't expect it at launch, but I feel like the experience is already there. They just need to put the rules into place, which I know is easier said than done. But this seems like a pretty obvious move for a lot of people who maybe just don't want to fight and like other parts of Starfield, they just want to fly around and everything. It can kind of, again, being the do everything game, provide different experiences for different types of players all in one product, which is crazy to say, again, and speaks to the scale and scope of the title. One experience he documented that I thought was really interesting is that he said he docked with a huge freighter ship where the gravity well was on the fritz and the lights on the ship would actually flicker as the gravity would turn on and off throughout his demo. And so it was actually very physics focused, like things would start floating in the air and then drop down. And so it would change how he explored the environment itself, which I, again, just think sounds awesome. You know, when you think of a Bethesda Game Studios dungeon. I think a lot about environmental storytelling, interactable storytelling, as in, you know, you see a terminal in a Fallout game, right? And you read the logs. I think of the notes that you find on the ground, another form of interactable storytelling. They're all about stories being told, but mechanically speaking, I think of something like Skyrim, where you have those puzzles in there, Fallout 4 was very much a shooting gallery for most of the dungeons that were there, where to have moments like this, which are physics driven, which is interesting because you think the idea, it makes sense, would come a lot sooner since Bethesda Game Studios games, like all these objects in the world have physics attached to them. That's why you can pick them up and move them around and why uh, frame rate was a big issue for them going into this game and why they settled at trying to lock it at 4K 30 on Series X and 1440-30 on Series S. Of course, we'll see what the frame rate ends up being like is because of the interactive nature of all of these objects, or as Todd would say, all of the stuff, right? And so to know that this stuff will be movable in an overall, we'll say, dungeon-like environment is exciting. That, to me, is the part that I've said multiple times, so I'll try and make this the last, that I'm so keen on seeing is I like the on-foot exploration, but to me, finding this abandoned, floating, creepy spaceship out in the middle of the galaxy and just going in and seeing what it's all about could create such a almost horror-like vibe. Is the tone of Starfield as flexible as its scope, right? Because you can go to so many places, we see so many biomes, they all look beautiful, but can it like get creepy when you turn off the lights and there's like a creature craw crawling around the ship? Again, one of those ideas that I imagine it has to be in the game, it practically sells itself when you think of the experience that's already there. Otherwise, the last real detail here is that he thinks there's gonna be people who put hundreds of hours into this game and never finish the main story. I don't think I've ever shared this fun fact with Maddie before, but I've only beat Skyrim once. Anytime I fire this game up, I don't do the main story at all. And with the way Starfield is being presented to me, I don't know if this will actually be the case, but I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being the same. To me, Skyrim has a great sense of adventure. I love being in its world, interacting with its people, crawling through its biomes, redoing the quest lines for the factions, because to me, the factions are always what make the BGS game never the main story the main stories can be decent like i think fallout 4's main story for all everyone detracts from it i i found it to be quite respectable i was like you know what this is actually pretty good but something like starfield really evokes that same sense of adventure and exploration where i could see that being the same thing for a lot of people hundreds maybe even thousands of hours just spent exploring building crafting living in this world enjoying the highlight reel of whatever factions you prefer maybe in different ways since Starfield looks to be more replayable, and then never finishing the story again. I mean, that's how it's been for me with Skyrim. I've dove into the DLC. I've dove into every nook and cranny of this game, but I've only beat the main story once, and that's after thousands of hours with it. So this statement here is great to see because it's in line with what we've heard about Bethesda Game Studios titles of yore, and that's what I've been saying for a while. A lot of like oblivion energy in this game. So we'll see, but I wanted to make sure that I 
got all this information here and together for you all. Offered some thoughts as we went along because I'm very excited for this game naturally. And I want to see what you think about it all. So, fire away. What did you think of IGN's preview of Starfield and what they had to say here? Is there anything you feel is missing or you wish was added? Fire away in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy. Stay active. I love you all. Peace.